In this problem, we have to find the interval of convergence for this power series. So let's go ahead and go through it. So we'll start by using the ratio test. So the ratio test says when you take the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n, one of three things will happen. So if this limit is less than 1, the series will converge absolutely. If it's bigger than 1, the series will diverge. And uh, if it's equal to 1, we have no information. So in these problems, what we do is we take the limit and we purposely set it less than 1 because we're trying to force convergence. We're trying to find all of the values of x for which the series converges. So this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity. And so here we'll keep the absolute value and we're just basically going to replace all of the n's with m plus 1's. So this first one here already has an m plus 1, so it'll be m plus 1 plus 1, so n plus 2. So negative 1 to the n plus 2. And then here we have an m plus 6, so it'll become n plus 1 plus 6. That's m plus 7. And then we have x to the m plus 1. Then we're supposed to divide by a sub n. So that's already what we have up here. This whole piece here is your a sub n. This will be negative 1 to the m plus 1. Then we have m plus 6. And then we have x to the n. All right, so a couple things. So first, the negative 1 to the n's can go away because what happens is you can break it up and you can do something like this. And then here you have the other stuff. And so the absolute value of negative 1 to any power is always going to be 1. And the reason is uh, this is going to be either 1 or negative 1. The absolute value of 1 is 1. The absolute value of negative 1 is 1. So you get 1 in any case. So let's go ahead and drop those. Okay, so we have n plus 7. Then here we have n plus 6. And now these x's here, they can be simplified. You have x to the n plus 1 over x to the n. And what you can do is you can write the numerator as x to the n times x to the 1. Because when you multiply these, you add the exponents. And then on the bottom, we have x to the n. And these cancel, and that just gives you x. So this leaves us with an x here. So it cleans up really nicely. Now we can go ahead and take the limit. So the x uh, is independent of n. Uh, it has nothing to do with the limit. In fact, some people like to do this. They like to pull out the x like this. Let me just show you. I usually don't do this, but I thought I would show you just so you see. This is actually allowed. You can actually pull out x's from the limit because the limit is a limit with n, right? n is going to infinity. You can treat x as kind of like a independent variable. It's independent of the limit, so you can pull it out. This limit here is going to be 1. That's because you have a polynomial over a polynomial, and they're the same degree. So the answer is the ratio of the leading coefficients. There's a 1 here, there's a 1 here, so it's just going to be 1. So this is equal to the absolute value of x times 1, which is just the absolute value of x. So we used the ratio test, and we got the absolute value of x. We want it to converge, so we force it to be less than 1. So we take the absolute value of x, and we set it less than 1. Whenever you drop the absolute value, super important, you get a plus and a minus. And we know that our series will converge everywhere uh, between negative 1 and 1 based off of this. The only thing left to do in this problem is to check the endpoints. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the sum down here so we can see it on the screen. And we'll go through and check the negative 1 and the 1. So the original question was the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1. Then we had n plus 6 
and then we had x to the n. Okay, let's check each one very, very carefully. So first, let's maybe check um, negative 1. So I'll write check negative 1. And this checking usually requires all of the series tests. So in theory, you have to have some, familiar, some familiarity with all of the uh, convergence tests for series. So we have the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity. So we're just going to take the negative 1 and actually just plug it in for the x. Just replace the x with your number. So we have negative 1 to the n plus 1, n plus 6. And then we have negative 1 to the n, right? That's our x being replaced with uh, negative 1. You can do some stuff here. Let's see. This is the infinite sum. As n runs from 0 to infinity, you can multiply these negative 1s. Um, when you multiply negative 1 to the n plus 1 times negative 1 to the n, you add the exponents. So we'll get negative 1 to the 2n plus 1. Oh, this is cool. Then you have n plus 6. So this is cool because uh, you may not know this. So if you have 2n, where n is an integer, it's always even. If you have 2n plus 1, where n is an integer, it's always odd. So here we have 2n plus 1. So we have negative 1 to an odd power. So that's always negative. So this is equal to the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity of negative 1 times n plus 6. OK, so now we have to determine if this uh, infinite series converges or diverges. So the go-to test, the test you should always do every single time, no matter what, is the nth term test. The nth term test says you take the limit of this piece here, this is your a sub n, and if this limit is not 0, the series diverges. So let's take that limit as n goes to infinity of negative 1 times n plus 6. And so n plus 6 is approaching infinity. There's a negative here, so it's going to be negative infinity. This is not equal to 0, so diverges. It's important to write it all out by the nth term test. So that means that we're not going to include the negative 1. So if we were to start to write our answer, I'll write it here in green, we would have a parenthesis on the negative 1. If we had convergence, we would put a bracket because we would include the negative 1. So again, the nth term test. As a refresher it says that if you take this limit and it's not equal to zero, the series diverges. If it's equal to zero, nothing happens. Some books actually call it the nth term test for divergence, and that's so people don't use it incorrectly. So if it's not equal to zero, diverges, equal to zero, try something else. All right, let's check one. Get in there, check one. So again, we'll just take our series and actually just replace the x with 1. So we have the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1, n plus 6, and then we have 1 to the n. Well, 1 to the n is just 1, so this is equal to the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1, n plus 6. And again, the go-to test is the nth term test. So let's uh, attempt to use that. Let me try a different color. Let's take the limit as n goes to infinity All right, of our a sub n, which is this here. So this is negative 1 to the n plus 1, n plus 6. So the n plus 6 is approaching infinity, and the negative 1 to the n plus 1, it's going to be 1 or negative 1, 1 or negative 1. So uh, this limit is oscillating. It's not going to approach anything. So it does not exist. So it's not equal to 0. So it diverges by the nth term. Test. Problems are a lot of work. So again, because it diverges, we use a parenthesis in the one. If it converges, we use a bracket. And so that is it. That is the interval of convergence. That's the final answer right there, negative one to one.
So it's always really important to check the endpoints in these problems. The only time you don't have to check the endpoints is if you use the geometric series test, which you cannot often use. It doesn't, most of the time you can't use it. So most of the time, um, you know, it's just a ratio test and then you just go through the motions and check the endpoints. Kind of a long video, over 10 minutes, but hopefully this video uh, has been helpful. That's it. Good luck.